Yeah, obviously the Cardinals going to be a dangerous team in the NL Central as we take a look at the Pocota projections for the 2023 NL Central standing. So it has the Brewers winning by two games over the Cardinals as Milwaukee led the division by three games entering August last season. So they're looking to hang on here in 2023. Now this division has several subplots to it, gentlemen. So we're going to start with the stat cast darlings of the division and O'Neill Cruz and Hunter Green. So we're going to take a look at this, fellas. The Reds righty had the highest average forcing fastball among starting pitchers. And O'Neill Cruz was top 10 in sprint speed and arm strength and first in max exit velocity. So see why. There's room to grow there for the six foot seven shortstop game. There's plenty of room to grow. And O'Neill Cruz, he can be a superstar player. All of his, all of the attributes that he has makes him a potential superstar guy. Why? Because he makes plays that no other shortstop in the game makes. He's one of the most athletic guys on the field. Nobody is getting to that ball. He's so long, six, seven frame, getting to balls that just the average shortstop can't get to. Nobody's catching that ball. Just the fact that he's six, seven, he's able to get to that. But with that comes some issues. He's trying to work on the footwork. Sometimes you have just the regular standard play that he's trying to move too fast. He wants to show off the arm strength. And sometimes you just have to slow the game down, get your feet up under you, and make a good throw over to first base. With the bat, he's one of the most exciting players in the game. When he hits the ball, He's hitting it harder than anybody else in the game, and he just has this joy that he plays with when he's playing the game. He's so free. He's so fluid out there on the field. With those good swings, come some swing and miss as well, which he's trying to make the adjustment. Every young player in the game is trying to make the adjustment. When you're a big guy, you do not have to overswing to hit the ball out of the ballpark. He is so strong that all he needs to do is shorten up a little bit. Take Carlos Rodon the other way if that's what you need to do. Use your power to all fields because you don't have to reach back. All you have to do is get the barrel to the ball, especially in a yard like Great American, and leave the yard. Yes, he can get the head out every now and then, but his approach has to be the other way to where even if Jacob deGrom is throwing his best stuff, he leaves with a confused look on his face like, how did I just let this guy get me? So O'Neill Cruz is one of the guys that I'm really going to be watching this year. He's had some struggles. Yes, the average doesn't show off too much, but you can see that he's continuously getting better, and if he can continue to make those adjustments, he can be a superstar guy in this game. I mean, Derek Sheldon continues to sing his praises, mm -hmm. and what you were saying, just getting used to all six, seven of his body here. All right, Hunter Green on the other side was a huge story for the Reds last season. After struggling through his first 16 starts, the six foot five righty rounded into form for the last eight starts. For more on the Cincinnati Flamethrower, here's Lauren Shahadi. LG, when you throw over 300 fastballs, 100 plus miles per hour in a single season, Hunter Green, you're up. You earned yourself a trip to Jersey City. Come on. A member of MLB's Urban Youth Academy in Compton. He was a part of many youth events, including the Junior Home Run Derby back in 2016 at the All-Star Game at Petco Park. The very next year in April of 2017 became the 13th high school athlete to appear on the cover of Sports Illustrated. Wow. And then just a few short months later, he was drafted second overall by the Cincinnati Reds, of course. Then it slowed down. Tommy John surgery, a pandemic slowing his rise to the big leagues. But last season, he made Cincinnati's opening day roster, made his debut April 10th against the defending champion Braves with his parents in attendance. How cool is that? In his debut, he was 22. What'd he do? Struck out seven, no problem, earned the win. And for an encore in his next start against the Dodgers in his hometown of LA, 39 pitches over 100 miles per hour, setting a single game record in the StatCast era, which by the way, the Reds ace later broke again with 47 against St. Louis in September. He's breaking his own records. And Jake, you know this better than anyone. The fastball, a big part of his evolution last season. That's right, Lauren, the fastball. We're going to keep it real simple right here, and I'm going to show you Hunter Green. To start last season, he come out with a bang. This 100 plus mile an hour fastball is absolutely electric. You're going to see right here to Matt Olson and this great Atlanta Brave team were no match right out of the shoot for this fastball. Good hitters counts in conviction he throws it with. He talked about really finishing with his hand. You see Freddie Freeman as good as there is in the league. There's Max Muncy and then Chris Taylor. The fastball is overpowering. But what can happen 
And this is what happened in the middle part of the season and sometimes late in games. That fastball, when it's not quite 100 and you're in 1-1 one, one, and hitter counts, 3-2 counts, you see that leg kick. Guys are gearing up and cheating to hit that fastball. And if the command isn't there, we become a problem. And that's what Hunter has really understood. And what I saw in these last four starts was the command of the fastball. He threw it more, 60% of the time. But watch the command, see why? It's perfectly executed. He's ahead in the count. When he's ahead in the count and they're worried about 101 or the slider in the changeup that he's developing, it's problems. This young man I watched in a big way come on the scene. His last four starts, he was almost unhittable in that division. The Cincinnati Reds have a superstar to come. Here he is, Hunter Green, ladies and gentlemen. Hunter <laughs> Green, bright future for him. Got the opening day nod with the oldest team in the game. So can't wait to see him after that great opening day parade in Cincinnati. Who doesn't love it? All right, two rivals are going through changes in 2023. Wilson Contreras is taking over for future Hall of Famer Yadier Molina in St. Louis. And the Cubs brought in Dansby Swanson to be the new face of the team. So Jake, back to you, my friend. You've watched Dansby a lot over the years. What do you think he can bring to Wrigleyville this season? I think Dansby Swanson has just really changed the culture. David Ross has had now had a couple years, and I really believe, I know David personally, Dansby Swanson is referred to by guys like Walt Weiss and Ron Washington as a model player. This guy plays every day, CY, penciling men. I really believe that he is going to change the culture, really add to what the Nico Horner and all these young guys are really trying to build there in Chicago. You pair that with, with Eric Hosmer, you pair that with Jamison Tyone and some of these guys that they the, they've put around him. I think the Cubs are really on to something. Dansby Swanson, the centerpiece for a while. The Cubs are for real, and they're going to be contenders now moving forward. With, with the Contreras, it's, it's one of those things where you're watching spring training, and yes, he's getting the hits. He had a great spring. He swung the bat very well, but what you're really watching for this year is how he's going to go out there and manage that pitching staff. Yes, you're coming in and you're replacing Yadier Molina, somebody who's worked with great pitching staffs. Big shoes to fill? I don't know. Exactly. He has to come in and he has to work with Jack Flaherty, Miles Michaelis, Jordan Montgomery, but those guys have all looked good in spring, and him working over there with Kisner, the backup catcher, are having the opportunity to really get to know their pitching staffs. That bat it will be an upgrade. I understand. I, I give Yachty all the respect in the world. But at this point in his career, Contreras is a huge upgrade for that bat. And he's going to go out there and, and catch a good game for the Cardinals. God, and after that whole trade debacle, going to oh. another team in the <laughs> same division, I love me some drama. And I feel like this is promising to be soap mm. opera level drama. All right, for the Brewers, like I mentioned earlier, they lead the division entering August. Now, in August, they traded away Josh Hader, and then the team completely fell out of playoff position. So, so I ask you guys, will the Brew Crew repeat that trend this season and trade away an all-star arm or maybe will Corbin Burns and Brandon Woodruff stay for the entire season? What are they going to do? At what point do you decide? You would, buyers or your sellers? I think they're going to decide early. I mean, clearly the Brewers showed us last year that they're willing to even trade their all-star closer, even if they are in first place. And I feel like with the arbitration case with Corbin Burns, the Brewers and Corbin Burns are in the weird place right now to where the Brewers are going to have to come out extremely hot and probably be up by five or six games going into June, July for them to hold on to him because if they have the opportunity to sell him high, I feel like they're going to take that opportunity. Earlier in the year, I said, you know, maybe the Guardians are going to try to jump in or maybe the Yankees are going to try to jump in. It's going to be a lot of people asking for Corbin Burns. So if they make an offer that the Brewers cannot refuse, I see him being moved if they're not sitting in first place. I completely agree. There's going to be every team that is a World Series contender in on these two guys. I, like I said, what does Milwaukee do? Who knows? If Corbin Burns... If Brandon Woodruff are available, we saw what Luis Castillo brought to the Seattle Mariners. And you go get a number one starter, you send a message to your team. If these two guys are available, they are number one starters that impact your team and give you a World Series uh, real good chance to, to make that ticket happen. I mean, they have one of the best staffs in baseball. And if you can leverage that for the future, then Ooh. why not? If you're what one you of those do? guys, why not go to a contender? I feel like it's win-win at this point.